All right, let's go ride that Mercedes Benz GLC. Let's put the seat belt and look at that. The seat belt is pulling slowly inside. It will hold me there in the seat. I, if I ever go on a snow drift or if the vehicle start to skid, you're gonna feel that belt pulling you inside. If you're doing an emergency maneuvers, that's gonna be the same thing. Don't get scared because the vehicle will help you to, to hold yourself in your seat it will restrain you there and you will have less chance to have an injury if an impact occurs so don't get scared at first it's going to be pretty surprising even for your passenger so let's talk about the mechanical components and road and link first of all the engine we've got the new 2.0 liter turbocharged dohc well it's the same engine that you're going to find in the c300 of mercedes-benz and it's replacing the 3.5 liter that we had in the GLK in the older version. Yes, I know, it's less powerful, and, but it's gonna be more efficient towards fuel economy. 241 horsepower at 5,500 RPM, and uh, torque is quite impressive for a little 2.0 like this one, 273 pound-feet of torque. And once again, that torque is coming uh, at full power from uh, 1,300 RPM to 4,000 RPM. It's kind of impressive. When I'm gonna start from a stop, I'm gonna feel that little bit of lag with the turbo, but as soon as I fall into full acceleration, you're gonna see that this car is moving. A zero at 100 kilometers is confirmed to be 7.3 seconds on the website of Mercedes-Benz. The top speed, 210, and you've got also an eco top start technology, meaning that when you're at a red light, when you're gonna be uh, in traffic, you, you will feel sometimes the engine simply turn, turning off itself it's going to be for fuel economy also it's a direct injection with fast responding a piezo injector and multi-spark ignition system for cooling you've got a air to water intercoolers as you can see mercedes-benz put a lot in effort of giving you a good little engine on this one if you want full power you need to use premium fuel well sorry guys but that's a performance car the good news is that we might someday have a diesel engine even for america and i can't wait to put my hands on the amg version that they're previewing right now for the Mercedes-Benz GLC. I love AMG version of Mercedes-Benz because they're so powerful and fun to drive. And what a grunt that you can hear from those cars bearing the AMG badge. Transmission, 9G Tronic. It's the world first nine speed automatic transmission with hydrodynamic torque. For the converter, it's a premier in that segment. What does that mean? It's it means that the transmission will adapt and save you a lot of fuel. When you're gonna be in comfort mode, you're gonna see that you don't even feel the gear change. And by the way, look at that. No sound of the engine. <laughs> My eco start stop system. But hey, let's move it into Sports Plus. And as you can see, the feature is turning off in that mode. Full acceleration. Gonna hold my equipment there. It's, it's not loud, but you can feel the gear change as soon as you put it into Sports Plus mode. It's, it went from all comfort to tack, 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 and no loss of power between the gears. It's also a transmission where you don't hear the noise. It gives you a, a lot better comfort with that car. Let's talk about dynamic select mode. Uh, you've got five mode that you can choose from. Uh, it's gonna change completely the reaction of the vehicle. The first one that I could say is comfort mode. As I switch to it, uh, you're gonna feel the vehicle become much more smoother. It's the standard sailing. It's, it's well balanced, it's fuel efficient. This is gonna be the mode that, that you will select if you're driving on a, a good road and you want the maximum performance of your climatization because it's 35 degrees outside, 35 Celsius. Uh, you've got also an eco mode. This is the one, if economy, if fuel economy is your concern, you're gonna choose that mode. You're gonna see that the response of the accelerator, if you give it full throttle, it will, it will take time to react, but it's, it's gonna be the mode that you're gonna do 
the most mileage with the car. Still, the comfort is a little bit on the downside because all the climatization will be, well, the heated seat and uh, the, the, the AC and the heater, they will diminish their efficiency. You know, once again, to be less hard on all the car components and focus on fuel consumption. The sports mode, now we're getting to something interesting. The sports mode, as you can see, switch it and you can see the nose of the truck simply raising. Uh, it's gonna be added agility, it's gonna be dynamic, uh, it's gonna be direct steering characteristic. When you're gonna be in a curve, you want to have that mode in because you want to feel the curve. You want to, the road to communicate to you. The direct steering is kind of impressive when you switch from eco to sports mode. There is a big difference with this one. Sports Plus, now we're talking. We're talking, you're on a track. We're talking, you want to improvise yourself on a track and you want to push the car to the limit. That's the mode for you. So everything is reactive. The transmission is, is simply fast yet brutal. Yes, that's going to be the world, brutal because when I'm flooring it, I can feel it responsive, but every ch change of gear, it will give a ton. It will be like that, and you will feel like that as soon as the vehicle's gonna change the gear. It's the most dynamic setup that you're gonna find uh, in this vehicle. The last one is an individual mode. You can select whatever you want from a uh, four criteria. Well, the direction of the engine, you want to be a little bit more smoother or more aggressive. The direction, let's say you want a smoother engine and a more aggressive direction, you can choose that. You will also have the possibility to activate or deactivate the starts up feature and you will also have the possibility to have full comfort of your climatization or reduce it with the feature. So right now what I've choose for my individual setting is sports engine, sports steering wheel. So you can configure the car to react the way you want and that's what I love right now with the Mercedes-Benz GLC and that dynamic select system to select what I want, how I like the car to react. So let's talk about road handling. Uh, as soon as you step behind the wheel, the car is a little bit higher than a Mercedes-Benz Class C, but you're gonna feel in that car. Luxury sedan feeling that you get when you're in the, inside that vehicle. So even if you're into curves, even if you're braking, and by the way, have you seen the brake in the front of this vehicle? If you don't have seen those, go back in the video and you will be impressed how much braking power that you can get out of this vehicle, impressive. You're gonna feel inside the car only a little bit high. You're gonna be in the curve, it's gonna offer you a good road handling, but the only problem might be with the tires. The Pirelli are giving up a little bit too soon when you compare it to the C300. Another cool thing is the formatic all-wheel drive system of Mercedes-Benz. If you're living in the States, well, lucky one, you're gonna be able to get a rear-wheel drive version of the GLC, but here in Canada, we don't. I'm kind of sad right now, a little bit more sportier with uh, with a rear wheel drive. The all wheel drive that we have is doing an incredible job. You're, you're rolling that car, you're rolling it on the road, you're rolling it off road, well, light off road, please. And you're gonna see that this all wheel drive system means business. We put it to the test. And by the way, when I say we tested it, we test the traction, we test the vehicle, how it will react in the middle of the hill, pushing the, the car to, to find a better traction and see how it reacts. We don't want to go over the hill too fast. That would be too easy for any normal all-wheel drive vehicle. We want to see how the car will manage its power, will manage its traction, and this one showed us that it can do it. So if it, it was impressive on, on, on the diagonal test, so imagine what it can do in a snowy situation, in light of roading, and even if the angles of, of uh, in the front are good, even if, if, if the departure angle uh, in the back are good, be careful because it's not meant for serious off-roading and you don't want to damage those nice AMG wheels. So when you're gonna be in a curve, you're gonna feel that system also working for you. Uh, sometimes the suspension feels a little bit different. And by the way, I didn't talk about it. If you choose the air suspension option, uh, as soon as you change the setting also of the dynamic, it's gonna adapt the suspension. Right now we don't have it. And when I get into curve, when sometimes they are bumpy, I, I tend to feel a little bit tail who wants to move a little bit. It's kind of, Usually I got that with, with trucks or a little bit heavier SUV, but right now, 
probably because of the road here are more damaged than usual but I can feel that feeling it's gonna it's gonna hold the road but the other effect is, is the purity tire seems to, to, to give up soon the, uh, their uh, adherence when you're in a curve I'm gonna hear that that noise coming out from them telling me hey you might be too near the limit so be careful with a little stickier tire this car would do even better uh, on the skid pad uh, the suspension if you choose the air suspension as soon as you're gonna get a load in the back of uh, that SUV it's gonna simply level itself and I think that's a, a great feature also when we accelerate well right now I'm rolling and I'm, I'm in uh, sports plus dynamic mode As soon as I step on it it's gonna react quickly but when I'm, I'm from a starting point I floor it and there's the delay to when the car is gonna move why uh, why it's not like that probably because of the size of the car the turbo the spooling or a little bit of electronic tweaking to make sure that there's not going to be any skin on the acceleration but still it's a it's an all-wheel drive well i think this is a little bit of fraction of second of too much delay for me but uh, when i'm going to be moving like right there when i floor it it's going to react and it's going to be ready uh, to uh, accelerate <laughs> security security with the car is impressive i've got a lot of features the first one is the dtr which is distronic plus system uh, with steer assist as soon as i turn it on i can also open my uh, assistant of uh, trajectory that would hold me right there uh, between the lanes and when the, those two system combines are open it's incredible right now i'm on cruise control and as you can see the car is slowing down because there's traffic in front of me and you can see also the, the steering maintaining me in the middle lane the most precise way ever this is holding right between the lines and this system is precise there you go it's accelerating no need to do nothing so when you're going to be in traffic with all those features turned on you will have a peace of mind so the distronic plus system with steer assist it's an intelligent automatic cruise control with line guidance right now i've got some lines and as you can see the vehicle is going to simply take itself between the lines right now i'm punched at 90 kilometers i can adjust the distance with the vehicle in front of me and right now i can see that there's a corolla who simply get in front of me and once again the car is adjusting itself also when i will get too near one side of the line i'm gonna hear a thumb in the steering and when the car is gonna feel that i'm losing attention to that line it's gonna apply brake and bring me back right in the middle of it so once again nice feature this system is working uh, with the information of a 3d stereo camera that are that you're gonna find in the front windshield a neat feature about that you know when you get into winter those camera tends to get dirty and the system will simply tell you that hey i'm not able to work uh, i'm turned off because something is locking the camera but mercedes-benz added some some uh, little line of uh, defrost so as soon as you turn on your defrost these lines are going to work to keep the system clear the system is quite incredible and it's going to work from zero to 200 kilometers per hour way over the speed limit a tow band speed limit but i like that you've got also a bass plus uh, with cross traffic assistant you've got a uh, brake assist plus uh, who is able to reduce the risk of rear-end collision and accident at road conduction you've got the continuous monitoring of the traffic situation ahead of you uh, with the radar and sensor and once again the 3d camera vehicles traveling ahead are registered up to a speed to 250 kilometers per hour so once again that system is checking everything for you when there's going to be also a danger of, of a collision the system will give a visual warning to the driver via the instrument cluster and if the driver firmly apply the brakes the system will calculate the brake pressure that would be needed to prevent the collision if a collision cannot be prevented the impact speed is reduced as much as possible by emergency braking and that system is also working with pedestrian so it's the same principle it's not going to detect cars it's going to detect pedestrians so once again quite a secure car one neat feature also is when you get rear impacted the vehicle will apply the brakes so that you won't go uh, swerving all around and when you get rear-ended sometimes 
uh, you release the pressure of holding your brakes so it's going to maintain you uh, in place as much as it can if you get rear-ended. You still got also active lane keeping, you've got uh, active blind spot assist. I didn't see any tests realized uh, with the IIHS, but when I checked in European country, Eurocap did some tests with the GLC and it got excellent score. Let's talk about fuel consumption. We went from uh, city driving to highway driving for a long time this week. We also did some good acceleration. We went uh, a little bit uh, diagonal testing with this car. It's kind of cool, 11 liter per 100 kilometers on the Mercedes we website is nearly the same of what we did. And you might be able to do a lot better because if we check the echo indicator that we have inside, well, we didn't have a high score. So you might want to maybe slow the gas pedal a little bit and you will be able to do a lot lower, I think, than this one. I wouldn't be surprised to see 10 and even some nines if you're doing more highway with uh, with that truck. 66 liter and you've got a reserve of seven liter uh, in the car. So once again, not too bad for fuel consumption. So when I sit behind the steering wheel of the Mercedes-Benz GLC, uh, I feel comfort already. I love the finishing. I love how the seats adjust and adjust with a wide range of possibility to give me optimal comfort. The passengers in the rear are going to be comfortable and I love also the storage, the 40-20-40 seats uh, where I'm going to be able to place all the luggage, even the skis, even the snowboard, so it will move all around and still bring uh, some friends along. The other thing which is quite interesting is the response as I drive it. I think it feels more and more like a car and maniability when, when you're going to steer in that parking. The wheels, usually SUV wheels are turning like that, but Mercedes-Benz is giving a little bit of angle. So you're going to see that maniability is quite impressive when you go from a parking to a city mode or even on highway when you're going to do some maneuvers, you're going to be impressed. Uh, with uh, with those maneuvers inside multimedia takes a little bit of time to get used to it I love also the Bowmaster system I love the sound quality of that sound system and by the way a little parenthesis before uh, I end this segment uh, all Mercedes-Benz GLC are equipped with a front base which utilize the vehicle uh, frame as a resonating chamber and provides uh, ultra precise low notes with extremely little distortion. Uh, it's regardless of the volume level that you have. So that's why it's giving us such a quality. Plug in your iPhone to get a better sound quality, forget a satellite radio and crank that volume. Ha, ha, ha.